Hi there, I'm Chris from Good Enough Scenery, and uh, people have been asking me, can you make an urban ruins board? Well, turns out I can. I made this kill team board for one of my friends, and in this video I'll be showing you how I made it. So it's a modular board, so each of the different tiles is slightly different, and all of the terrain is scattered terrain, so you can have a, a different layout like, each time you play the game. So I'll be showing you how I made the uh, boards, how I made these fences, how I made the collapsed road, all the little bits of scatter terrain you're seeing in front of you. And because it's modular, as you can see, there's different setups, different ways you can have the board around. So it feels a little bit different and acts a little different every single time you play. So how do you make it then? Well, you start off with six tiles like this. These are 11 inches square and 20 mil thick. You can buy the foam from a link in the description. I then marked out the road size. So this was five centimeters in from one edge and 15 centimeters in from another edge. That was for the four straight pieces. And then for the curved pieces, what I did was I marked out the straight part of it and then I used a, a handy cereal bowl to do the outside curve and uh, something smaller to do the inner curve. Um, it was nothing nothing rocket science and I realized later on that I didn't actually have to be that accurate with it because you'll see why I'm doing this right now. So I wanted to add a tarmac effect uh, but I didn't want it across the whole board so I very accurately taped off the area I just marked out and realized that in, in reality, I could have marked it out a, a lot less uh, less accurately because the pavement was going to get stuck on the top of it anyway. But, you know, I went above and beyond. If you're going to make your own, you don't have to be as accurate as I'm being here. But I, essentially, I just put some piles of tape on so that the during the next section where I'm making the tarmac, um, it didn't go all over the board. It just went into the areas where I wanted it to go. But uh, yeah, nothing complicated here. The way in which I make the tarmac is uh, slightly strange. So I started off by uh, soaking the uh, area with some uh, spray adhesive. You could use uh, this PVA glue. And now, um, yeah, I'm sprinkling talcum powder. Yeah, I'm not even, this isn't a joke. I'm actually sprinkling, uh, yeah, subscribe if you want, but you might think, what the hell is he doing? But yeah, talcum powder through a sieve which was later washed, I might add, uh, covering that whole section and then giving it another spray down with some uh, matte, uh, Geep Gaining's Mac, matte scenic spray, which is easy for me to say. Uh, from there, I then, from a distance, started spraying it black. So all of this kind of layering this up, you want to leave it a little bit before you, uh, you spray it because otherwise you end up spraying everywhere and it, the more vertically you can spray it to the better of which you just start pushing the loose talcum powder around rather than painting it uh, and you can do a few layers of this you can leave it to dry add another layer add some uh, add some more scenic spray eventually you can take off the uh, the tape like this and you can see it does um, peel off a little bit as you're doing it but as we're going for ruins this is absolutely fine so i just neatened up the edges just by spraying those black as well and I think, you know, it actually looks like tarmac, but it could look more like tarmac. So from there, I used uh, a lighter gray to just dry brush the whole thing. So loading up the brush, taking a little bit off of it, uh, and then just going backwards and forwards. It doesn't show up massively from this angle, but when I show it uh, close to the camera, hopefully you see that it is actually worth doing. Um, but they've been doing even more to make it more road-like and tarmac-like, but that's what it looked like after it had been dry brushed. What's up next? Adding some damage. So one of the tiles in particular, this one, in fact a couple of them maybe, really the, the, I didn't add enough glue when I put the tarmac down, so it ended up having this massive gap in it. And I had two decisions, I had a decision to make two choices. I could either redo the, the tarmac thing or I could make a, a feature of the broken tarmac. So what did I decide to do? I decided to cut the hell out of the road. Uh, so I just cut around an outline and then just gouged the knife in, pulled the pieces off, just trying to make uh, some some really nice looking broken bits and damage and really uneven and yeah, ended up looking a little something like that. We'll be adding some more detail to that in a little bit. But that's essentially the, the tiles finished. Uh, in terms of the tarmac, so it then came to making the pavement. So I've got some 50 mil thick foam and I ran it through my hot wire cutter, cutting off uh, strips that were pretty about a half a, half a centimeter thick, that's a five mil or just less than a 
quarter of an inch if you're using a different system. And I made loads and loads of these strips, not really thinking about the length too much. And then once I cut these lengths, I then uh, put them on top of the board and then cut them to length, as you can see. And then it was time to add some more detail. So I just eyeballed a, a curb width. And I'm running the knife incredibly gently over this just to just to kind of lightly score it. And then I did the same. I used that as a gauge for doing all of the other ones. I then used the width of the pavement to score in the uh, perpendicular direction. I went all the way along this, just creating my own little concrete pavement tiles. And then cutting into the curb here, just I thought the curbs should be a different um, a different width to the uh, the slab. So I went and kind of bisected that all the way along on the top and along the front as well. Just being very, very gentle, barely going in. But then later on, going over it with a biro, this kind of opens up the, the score that you've made and kind of really adds some kind of angular and some angles and some depth to the to the tiles. So I literally just went over the whole thing on every single one. Bit time consuming this, but I think that it was, uh, it was worth it. And then I added some damage. So by adding, to add damage, all I did was just draw on cracks in random places. Really didn't think about it too much. Just thought, where might a crack be? And drew a line. Then to add some more detail, I took a wire brush and on the curb section, I kind of went lengthways on it. And on the pavement section, I went uh, kind of perpendicular to that. So when you see um, real life concrete, you see that it, it has these kind of lines on it. Now to add even more detail, I then got a, some tin foil, rolled it up, and then rolled it across, oh, by wire brush. Just rolled it across the, uh, the whole thing. And this really creates this uneven detail that, uh, now, when we um, dry brush it and add some other details later, it really, really does actually look like concrete, I think. Well, I think. Next up, I decided I wanted to have some areas that were completely destroyed, so I drew out a crater and then I cut into it. Cutting quite deep to actually cut into the surface below as well. So just snap that bit out like that. I did the same on the other side. And then just to make sure that I was going to be cutting out the right bit next, I cut round the uh, the edge there with the sharp knife, and then definitely not cutting towards myself. I cut out the crater here, just taking all out these details. Look, another thing telling you to subscribe. And there we have our crater, which I think looks pretty awesome. And that's what a rotel might end up looking like. Uh, then I had to do the same sort of thing on the curved pieces. So all I did here was just get a uh, a tile. Get, get a, a single piece tile, get the same bowl, it might have been a different one of the same size, who knows, exciting stuff. And then just literally gently scored around the edge, did this a few times and then was able just to snap, there it goes. And here we have the pieces for a corner thing, which I did exactly the same thing for in terms of adding damage, adding detail. Uh, and then to do the other corner, I used a peanut butter lid. You could use a different lid. I used a peanut butter one. And same thing, I pushed down, made a little score. Um, and that was the piece for that corner. And as you see, all of these, all of this pavement stuff overlap, will be overlapping the tarmac. So I never needed to be so careful with uh, marking out the, uh, the taped off area. Then I went through the very laborious task of painting it all grey, which is uh, an odd thing to do considering it was already grey. But as you can see from looking at the pieces there, they're all just a slightly different shade of grey. So I wanted to base coat them so that we had some something that was a bit more uniform, just because, you know, it's supposed to be pavement all in the same area. It's all going to be together, so it should all look the same. So painted that, left it to dry overnight. So if you can do lots of painting, I suggest that you do leave it overnight so that you're not hanging around. You know, you know, if you're asleep, then the paint might as well be drying. So for here, I did a dry brush, so loaded up the brush with some white, tested it on a bit a uh, spare piece you see there, and then went over um, the corner. Bye. Um, yeah, just went over this corner piece because I thought I'm going to test it on a, a piece that doesn't matter too much, first of all. And as you can see, I'm keeping the brush relatively perpendicular and just picking out all of that lovely detail that we put in with the tin foil and the uh, and the wire brush. 
So just showing you the same thing over and over again. Yeah, this is um, this is a long thing, long task to do, uh, but I think it's worth it. This is even sped up. This is slow. Come on, Chris, hurry up. But look at it. I really think that looks like concrete. I really, like, genuinely, if that's if concrete was mini, it would look like that. And uh, yeah, this was all of the pieces that have been dry brushed. And as I'm as I'm doing them, I keep them in the, their sections, so the in their fours that kind of line up with the with the tiles, so that you're not worrying about it later on. Then I did some scorch marks. So just doing the same thing I did with the white, um, I did it with literally black. And just what I'm doing is painting out from the imaginary center. So you can see there, it's just a little bit more black. Just to add a bit more to say, there's one done and one not done, so you can see the difference. To put the pavement down, I use Instant Nails. There's a, a link to buy that in uh, the description. All I'm doing is put it down. Now, the reason I'm using uh, Instant Nails rather than the glue gun, you can use a glue gun if you want to. Instant Nails gives you way more working time, um, and you'll see why that's important when we come to this corner section in just a moment. Because the corner section, in terms of where it needs to be, is a little bit more difficult than doing the, the straight road part. But yeah, so I can put it all down and then I can adjust it because it needs to be 15 centimeters. That's what I'm measuring there, 15 centimeters from that edge. And if that was a glue gun, that would have already set and I wouldn't be able to adjust this. But by using the instant nails, it's not instant on foam, but it does set completely solidly. And then you cut off the, uh, the excess and then add some weight on it. That's what my hand's going down meant there. The straight section is really easy. All you're going to do is just put a line of uh, instant nails, bloop, and then stick it down. And then on the other side, doing exactly the same thing. So starting on with the, the edge one, so that gets the road into the right position, and then doing the same thing on the third and fourth pieces. Oh, something on the board. Better move that, Chris. Nice one. And uh, yeah, it ends up looking pretty road-like. Let's have a close up. Ta da! I really think that looks like a, a roadie pavement type thing. Now, for the road markings, I'm using some acrylic paint pens. So I'm marking the center of the road with a white, same at the other end, and then just with a ruler, just going draw for one inch, miss an inch, draw for an inch, miss an inch, draw for an inch, miss an inch, all the way along the center of the road. And some places I had to kind of dab it on rather than paint it on. I don't know why this happened with the white. The yellow was a, a lot a lot nicer to work with. So that was the, the center bit. Now with the yellow, for some reason, with this one, I was able just to simply go a line. A nice straight line all the way along. There we go. And do the same on the other side. Hey, let's have another close-up. Thanks, Chris. Cringe. Now, I did a similar thing on the curved ones. So I started off by drawing a straight line on that part, and then on the other part, and then I just eyeballed the corner. So, I mean, I could have gone round the peanut butter lid, but the peanut butter was in the cupboard, and you know, it's all sorts of effort that is. So I just eyeballed it to do a nice curve, which I was quite proud of, because I'm not very, believe it or not, I'm not very creative or artistically minded. So being able to draw a slight curve was impressive to me. And I was so confident that I did the same thing on the other side. Now, I kind of saved myself a job with regards to the rest of the road markings on this one because the floor was so destroyed, there was hardly anything to put on. But even so, I still bothered with the white lines, still bothered to, to measure it out and mark it. And I think that it ended up looking pretty decent. And I'm pretty sure that I'll probably do a close up. Yes, I did. Here we are. Uh, and that ended up looking like that. Now, for the final details of this, um, you could call this flocking. I don't know if you would or not. I had some very fine grey sand, which I bought from a shop. I had some tarmac chips, which I stole from a road. That's not a joke. I actually did. Um, and then I just mixed them up. Then I took some of the uh, Geek Gaming Matte Scenic Spray, which you can use just to paint on. And I just painted it into each and every crater. So I paint it into a crater, shake up the, the bits, and then just pour them out, trying to get some fine stuff and some uh, some grittier stuff so it looks like tarmac chips that have uh, gone all over the place and filled it all up. Guarantee 95% of that didn't stick down, but as long as the other parts did, that's all that matters. 
So I did this with all of the different craters and gouges all along the uh, every single tile. Did the same thing with the center of the road as well, just as, as if it's just been fully destroyed by uh, just people walking really, really violently down the center of the road or perhaps some sort of war. Could be one, could be the other. Who am I to say? I wasn't there. Um, and then to seal it all down with some of the uh, Geek, Geek Gaming Matt seems very. I cannot say that today, but I'm not re-recording this. It's far too long to be re-recording. So I sprayed the whole thing. I think I sprayed it two or three times, and that left it uh, pretty well stuck down, I think, and looking awesome in my personal opinion. Um, tell me what you think in the comments. Now, to finish it off, I just dirtied it up a bit. Now, this is annoying because the recording cut off. So what I've done here is I've taken some brown paint, I've taken some washing up liquid, I've mixed it together, and I'm gonna dab it on in a few different places and then blot it with that uh, bit of kitchen paper you can see that I just put down here. But in a few seconds, the video is going to cut off, which is really, really annoying. But uh, it's not rocket science, so hopefully you can work out uh, from what I've just said, exactly what I did. Uh, but it left it looking uh, something along the lines of this, as you've already seen, and I really like how it turned out. Now, that is the boards part finished. So the next part is the scatter terrain. So this is gonna be the defenses, this is what you're seeing here, the ruined building just behind, and everything else. Now, the basis of this scatter terrain is lots of different pieces of concrete. And when I say concrete, I actually mean foam. So I cut various different uh, lengths, various different widths and uh, cross sections. And each and every single one, I went over it in exactly the same way that I did the pavement earlier. So scraping it in one direction with the wire brush and then rolling it with the tin foil. Uh, and that creates really, really nice texture on it. So it does hopefully look a lot like concrete. Now, <clears throat> in terms of, um, Oh, the other thing I did was add some damage with a pen, just like I did with the other ones. So with all of this, I'm, there's no kind of special formula to how much I made or anything. I just cut loads and loads of bits. And then once I've cut loads of bits, I then painted them in exactly the same gray that I'd painted the, uh, the pavement earlier. Now, instead of doing a dry brush, I really went to town with the white. So essentially I almost painted it white but didn't try to get into every last little bit of uh, detail uh, I just went on it really heavy with the whites knowing that I wouldn't catch everything so the first thing I want to show you is the chain link fences so I've got a length of I think this was nine inches and then I cut uh, four lengths of three inches now in each of these I'm cutting a little slit down one side or two sides depending on whether it's one of the inner ones or the edge ones and then I'm widening that slit with a biro. So this is going to uh, form the, the space in which the fence is gonna be slotted in. The fence itself is made from this wire mesh. There's a product link in the description. And then uh, cutting it isn't the easiest thing. I had to buy some tin snips in order to do this. Only a few pounds, but uh, well worth it if you're gonna be making uh, much of this. So I cut uh, some lengths of this which would fit into the slot exactly. I think these were about three inches long and I think about two and a half inches high. And they slot into these uh, little recesses that we've just made, just like that. But we want to make these more interesting. And there's a few different ways in which I decided to make these more interesting. So one of the ways in which we did it was to have uh, one that was had like a gap in the fence. So this is what a normal one looked like. Uh, but this is one that I kind of cut at a, an angle and then I kind of bent it back so it looks like a like something's cut through it or it's exploded or something. And it creates like a, a gap in the fence that you can go through, which adds to gameplay as well. Another thing that I did was uh, I bent one of them in half like this, and then I used the tin snips to cut a hole in the center. Honestly, if you're gonna be working with this stuff, then tin snips is the way to go because it's really, really difficult to cut it without it. So I made one with a hole just like that and uh, bent it a little bit as well. Um, now, to make it look like it's old and rusty, uh, Typhus Corrosion was the first thing I used as a product link in the description. And I'll bring it up to camera here to show you what it does. So the, essentially, when 
on camera here, it kind of makes it look like it's been going invisible. But what it's really doing is adding some some brown to it, and it's got some it's a technical paint, so it's got some bits and pieces in it which makes it look uh, more corroded. So first of all, kind of wait for that to dry, and then use some riser rust as a product link for the description of that as well. Uh, and this stuff is like fantastic. So this is one of their kind of dry paints. So you put a bit on the brush and then get the excess off, and then we're just going to brush over this. Now, as I'm painting it, it's not going to come up well, but when you see it at the end, when I put it on the dark background, you'll see what it's uh, what it really, really looks like. So you can choose which place, places are going to be more rusty. So like in this central hole, I don't know if it makes sense or not, but I decided that would be extra rusty. Um, the other places I did it less so. But this is what it ends up looking like, which is absolutely awesome, I think. It really just sells the idea of it being really, really old stuff. Now, in terms of putting it together, you want to get your glue gun, you want to get it nice and hot, you want to get the excess off the end and do a really gentle bead down the edge. Because when we uh, put it into the slot here, we don't want glue like splodging out over the edges because that just it's always just a nightmare to get off. So it's better just to put less on because uh, that small amount of glue will be enough to, to hold it in place. So just slot it into the uh, the, the posts. And you can do, I, I ended up doing a, a straight one. I think I ended up adding a corner one to this in the end. I made some other little corners as well, all done in exactly the same way. And in terms of attaching it to the, the bottom post, just literally a little bit of glue on the, the bottom of the, the posts and then the, the cross beam, I don't know what it's called, but the bit I'm sticking it to, just hold it onto the end, hold it in place for a couple of seconds and the hot glue gun will uh, work its magic and you will have a nice rusty concretey chain linky fancy thing which looks uh, hopefully something a lot like that which is awesome so with that done next up we have the collapsed highway pieces and that's what i was going for with those uh, bits of road that are on the floor they're not supposed to be bits of road that have come up they're supposed to be bits of road that have collapsed down so this is before i did any of the kind of texture work on it i just got a few pieces together and saw what they look like now this uh, bit of foam here the texture of the top of it is good enough from my point of view to just be sprayed black and look like tarmac. It's got this kind of nice texture to it. Uh, the spray paint's not corroding at all. So I just sprayed a couple of bits of that black. Um, then I did the road markings first. I don't know why I did this in this order, but I did. Now, my original plan when I was making these bits of scatter terrain was for them to not be scatter terrain. They were to actually be pieces um, that were connected to uh, individual tiles, which is why I've got this kind of tile out here all those kind of bits of broken bits. And um, yeah, from there, I just kind of started putting a, a design together. So a couple of beams going across and then a side piece as well. So again, just with a glue gun, putting it down and then leaving a little bit of a, a, a gap on the edge so that the side piece could be attached to that. So I mean, the great thing about having a glue gun, it just attaches in seconds. So that's that glued down. And then I put a side piece on here, which I think looks good. And then I added a little bit of curb inside of that. So kind of gluing off camera, great camera work there, Chris. And yeah, just gluing that in just for a, an, an extra bit of detail. And I was thinking that this was what it might end up looking like. But eventually I decided having had some discussions with other players that having movable bits of scattered terrain is better than um, it connected to one tile. So. Eventually, I uh, just got a couple of uh, bits of the um, concrete posts. Uh, the brush wants to be spun, so there we go. And then just glued it all together like this in just a pile of rubble with a, uh, a slanty bit of road on top, which I thought would make a nice bit of scattered terrain. And then this is another one that I made um, where it's got a kind of a flat bit and a, a kind of slopey bit. So again, just piling up some uh, some concrete posts as if they've collapsed underneath it. And then it's kind of bent bit of road. I, I snapped it, but then it stayed together. So I thought, well, it can stay together and be glued a little bit. But essentially, it, um, it ended up looking like that. And then I added a few more little bits of rubble detail. Just so one of the side pieces I just kind of glued on its side to the road itself. Uh, and that's what it looks like. And the pen goes, wee. That's the uh, the downside, having a glue gun. 
onto the ruined building. Now this is uh, this could be an entire video all of its own, but uh, it's all part of the kill team board, so I thought I'd include it here. Now, to make this, I took uh, some of the 20 mil foam and cut completely random shapes out of it, and then cut them uh, down the uh, like lengthways, I guess you call it, to split them so it's only 10 mil thick, because otherwise the walls would simply be too thick. And I, I cut a lot of these. I cut a lot, a lot of these, far too many. But I didn't really have a plan in mind of exactly what I wanted it to look like, so I thought I'm going to make a cut up a whole bunch and then I'll probably use the rest on other projects. Now just like with the uh, other bits of scattered terrain and concrete, <clears throat> I've gone over it with the wire brush first and then rolled it with the tin foil and yes I did it with every single piece that you're seeing in front of you but um, yeah here's the difference between doing it and not doing it so it is worth doing because it actually I genuinely think it looks like little concrete. Now from here I took the um, the pieces and started to formulate a plan of what it's going to look like and this involves uh, cutting out some window shapes so very simply just measuring up um, so that they were kind of the same height on every piece if there was any uh, there's a one space where I thought a door might be suitable and um, I even went to the the lengths which you don't have to do if you do your own one but I went to the lengths of actually cutting uh, partial windows out as you'll see in a minute and a bit where you know the the wall would have been blown up but there would have been a bit of window there so we'll put a straight edge in there so I think this is what I'm doing at this bit here yes so on the edge of the building here there would have been a window here if the uh, uh, measurements are consistent which I like to think that they would be so I took out that uh, little bit there completely unnecessary but I think it adds something and then I started to formulate what it was going to look like uh, and this involved cutting a bit of the floor out here just to kind of be a bit of a, a slope into the building like it was a, a little bit broken and a little bit wrecked so cut that out and again you don't have to go to the same sort of detail on your own one but I decided that I was going to make this into tiles so just measured uh, two centimeter um, distance gaps between them and just scored it gently with a, a knife and then went over it with a biro and I did that on the bottom floor and then I did the same thing on the second floor as well and uh, this is just me painting every single piece so I'm not going to show you that because you don't need to see that but whole thing painted white and then the color will be taken out of it somewhat by the fact it's uh, it's black foam and that kind of kind of dulls it down and it'll be a quite a light grey as you'll see in a minute. Uh, from here it was a case of putting it all together. So I started with the floor, just a glue gun on the edge here like that, making making the bottom floor match up with the door there. As you can see I measured first so that it's going to be the same height, so I think it was three inches up. And then I stuck the other wall on as well. And yeah, that all came together very nicely. There we go. Just holding it together. I mean, this is the beauty of using a glue gun. It just sets so quickly. But if you need working time, not so good. But if you don't, then this is it's just fantastic. Oh, then I stuck a beam underneath so it looked a lot less like the, uh, the floor was just floating there. I uh, then uh, snapped this and it went much straighter than I thought it would. And then it was I, I could have had ladders. I mean, I think ladders are just overused uh, as a thing. So I wanted there to be steps up there, but it's all ruined. So I didn't want it to be steps, steps. So I just piled piece after piece of broken floor up um, to make a, uh, a makeshift staircase. So there was no real thought process that went into this. I just kind of made it up as I was going along just sticking pieces, making sure that each step would have a space for a, a 25 mil base to balance there nicely, uh, and then made it kind of prop up the floor as well, just so that it all kind of was relatively sturdy. Uh, and then on the final piece, I made sure that I glued the, the top and bottom of it. And then just as an extra bit of support, I added a, a pillar underneath the floor to kind of hold it up. And so that's what it ended up like. So structurally, I think that's absolutely everything in place and you can see what it looks like. Maybe this, the, the um, staircase looks a bit unnatural, but it's, it's, it's nice to have it not just be a ladder. And then it was a case of just dirtying the whole thing up and uh, making it look a little, a little bit more realistic. So I did like a heavy dry brush with a brown just to make it look all kind of muddy and horrible. 
uh, nothing particularly difficult here just going over the whole thing and it will be picking out the the raised levels whilst leaving the kind of the base color a little bit uh, or still still exposed then I wanted to look, make it look more like a war zone so I added bullet holes just by uh, pressing into it at the end of a paper clip I went across the whole model uh, adding bullet holes all over different heights um, different uh, different angles and then it's a case of uh, making it look like as detailed as you want to so I started with some skeleton horde uh, and I went over every bullet hole and just did a little bit of a drip coming out as if the bullets rusting in there and the water's leaked out and it's rusty and blah 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 uh, then I used some I think this is agrax it might be skeleton horde still might be mourn fang it's one it's a paint that's brown uh, and this was just to kind of dirty up the window sills or anywhere I thought there might be it might be a little bit dirtier and this included the top as well so the way i, I kind of think about it is where where would water uh, find its way most and i put a bit of brown on somewhere where it's uh, a little bit uh, a little bit wet and then i use some methonian camo shade that's what i'm using right here to add green where i think it would be really really kind of got some grime growing on it whatever so towards the bottoms of all of the walls uh, I like to add a Thonian hammer shake so I think it's a really um really nice thing and kind of the edges of the steps as well um yeah and I, and I think it ended up looking pretty pretty decent um maybe not perfect but uh I, I liked how it ended up looking so yeah you can add as much or as little detail to your own one as you would like to but that's uh that was it in terms of the um painting detail and then I just went across with a, just a smaller knife and cut out a, like a few bits of, of the the stonework. I added some cracks and uh, essentially that was uh, that was all finished. And then added a bigger crack with a pen. But essentially that was the ruin building finished, which means that the entire kill team board was then finished. And this is what it ended up looking like. So you've got the bits of collapsed road, you've got the fences, you've got the ruin building, and of course you've got the uh, the modular tiles. Uh, which can go in at several different shapes, uh, corners and the straight bits, however you'd like to. Uh, with some um, some nice uh, 40k models on there. So, yeah, that's the entire Kill Team board. I hope you've enjoyed this project. If you have, then please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when new videos arrive. And I look forward to showing you another video soon.